some serious is he even a pro flying about? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Morning y'all. There is snow about. Panatoni's on the breakfast table again. Another busy day of editing this morning, lessons at lunchtime, and I'm school pickup today. We're gonna go with posture related issues in relationship to club path as well on today's swing. Will the snow come? Come on, snow. With a request, what have we got for us today, all that? <laughs> oh, yesterday, Daddy. Right, we're there. Yesterday, Daddy, what? Daddy, my lady didn't. He didn't, did he? No, he I wasn't I... the perfect child, was he? No, I... because. So with today's action, we do see a big change of direction and we also see a very extended or stretched out starting posture position, don't we? From this position, we're gonna give you a few drills or ideas that you can do at home or at the range to try and just make sure you don't get so far away from it. And then talk about how those drills could help you actually improve that change of direction that we see there, that massive uh, shift in backswing to downswing which could get you hitting usually out to in for lots of golfers it doesn't always have to but let's go talk about posture and how that can affect your paths no i'm catching up on twitter and ignoring everyone you know? <laughs> yeah and just waiting for this vlog to be over and then i'll return that i wouldn't go on the comment section either bro if i was you deleting youtube <laughs> All right, well, you get back to your little darkened room, yeah? All right. It's raining and grey. Off to the range for lessons. So let's start with a bit of an idea around that posture. So look, get two balls, set up to your original ball, other ball in your right hand, and just drop it from your right shoulder. For me, it's finishing around a couple of inches, say just inside, oh, just outside my toes, just fall of my toes. For you, it's gonna drop. I reckon this far outside your toes. Having that big reach that you've got, you pull away from the ball and then you try and reach the ball, which is why we see this massive change of direction. We might see this change of direction anyway, but let's just get this variable out. You drop that ball down, that one's fine. It can pretty much stay there and then hit your shot. Hit some shots from there and see how that feels. It's gonna feel quite different. Good job, GC2. Let's answer your questions. Hey bro, question for you. Round 16 handicap. What's your views on me putting a sub zero in my bag? On that note, for me and my new apprentice need to knock that wall down. Have a good day, fella. Take care. Cheers, bro. So handicap and club equipment for me, there are correlations, but I would never think of it that way. I would go more with your style of play. I can show you, I've just taught a nearly 10 handicapper who hits the ball as strong as anybody, and I can show you another 11 handicapper who hits the ball half the distance with very different launch characteristics. You've got to go and get fit is the key thing. I would have no problem with someone of your handicap using a Sub-Zero in the new Epic, as long as it worked for you, as long as it fit for it, it was fit for you and you got the best numbers from it. And there lies the key. It's getting the best numbers, uh, the best feel, what you want a ball to do and what a club to feel like into your game. And try not to be so rigid with does this work or not, because you can make most things work within reason. So absolutely worth getting fit for it. Hi bro, just wondering <laughs> how you bruh. make a cup of tea. Do you put milk in and then water, or water then milk? Any advice would be great. Cheers bro. No problem bro, cheer up. Thanks for the question Matt. I hate tea, don't drink it, but on the rare occasions I make tea for people, it's water then milk, and then sugar. Always. Hey bro. Uh, my question is, do you think that playing the same course week in, week out could maybe give you a 
disillusioned like view on how well your your game is progressing for example you're going to know where the misses are you're going to know how far hazards are away green speeds you're almost going to know what club you're going to use before you've even got there to assess the shot so then when you go to play another course um you know you're not going to play quite as well as what your handicap uh, may suggest you are so my question really is do you think playing the same course week in week out can be actually a bit of a negative or is there ways that you can maybe change how you play on that course week in week out and improve your game i used to see this when i used to play amateur golf at a pretty decent level you would have localized or even club members that think that they are to a certain standard because they could knock it around their track that suited their game that they learned to play in reasonable scores but then you take it to the next you take it to a county level or inter county level or international level and you would see them fall down kind of dramatically you know just not be able to handle that kind of different situation at all so yes clubs can give you a very false feeling about what standard you're at in the grand scheme of things it doesn't really affect your handicap though because standard scratch should help you certainly competition standard scratch should help you in those situations a bit more ways of mixing it up at your home course what i used to do i used to try and just play every hole with a driver apart from bar threes and then i would play it another day and i'd try and only hit five irons off the tee so i'm having different clubs into those shorter par fours so i would keep mixing it up to make sure i'm hitting different parts of my bag but i wouldn't do that in competition because i wanted always to get obviously my lowest score and prove to myself that i was able to shoot a decent score phone call right sorry i'm back had to take that um yeah so mixing it up on your course i think is a great idea if you want to experience it at different shots make sure you're playing holes at different ways and the other key thing is to play as many different courses as possible because different courses require different skills that's something that's really important as well from links courses to tree line courses to open to narrow courses and it's learning that array of skills that's going to make you a better player that is wet out there been to the shops i've got tea for tonight i've run out of syrup for my coffees happy with that and i've got soup for lunch i'm hungry one second request oh, yeah. hello at home tip for you. So what I'm doing is I'm stood this far away from my desk with my toes and then my hands are touching the end of my desk here. So that's my shoulders ahead of my toes. So make sure your shoulders are over the end of the desk and then in turn your hands. Now to get the feeling of trying not to have that massive change of direction. Now I've done loads of other tips obviously on ideas of changing club path which you could still use. This is just an indoor thing you could do which builds posture and a feeling of club direction in together. So with my toes away from the end of the desk, shoulders over the end of the desk with my hands, I'm going to make some swings where I feel like I've come from my side of the desk, brush the end of the desk what would be near impact and then come back around from the desk so at the bottom i'm doing that little semicircle remember it's a three-dimensional semicircle so it's coming this way so down to up as well as in to a point and then back in so shoulders over the end of the desk toes inside so you know you've got your posture bent forward more rather than the big lean and then just make a few swings trying to just get your hands to brush that's as you get more confident you could actually do it a little bit faster because at the moment you're going to be coming from kind of hitting the end of the desk trying to pull this way you could do that one in the office right it's tea time the sausage and mash tonight all up. remember if you want to get involved in the videos lots of people asking how do they get a swing to me all they got to do post it on twitter post it on facebook they can send video questions you can to twitter and facebook so remember, got to hit that subscribe button as well, haven't they? Yeah. What's that button called? The subscribe button. That's exactly what it's called. <laughs> Alright. Oh.